just check in. <clears throat> uh, two things it asked. Or which one of these is a parallel circuit? That's this one. Parallel is the one that's broken up into different uh, little loops. Series just has one loop. So these are two series one. This is a parallel one. So it's A. Also, it asks for the total resistance of this circuit. Um, I tried to put them both on the same screen here when I, uh, but I still tried to want it. I still wanted it zoomed in as much as I could. So this is a parallel circuit. It's got a loop here and a loop here. It's saying if this one is all, if R one is eight ohms and R two is also eight ohms, like this, then what would what would the total resistance be? Since this is a parallel circuit, it's not just adding them up. That's only for series. For parallel, it's one over one over R one plus one over R two. So I'm going to do that one. So. 1 over R1, that's 8, plus 1 over R2, that's also 8. 1 8 plus 1 8 is 2 8. So I guess we can go ahead and say 2 8 is 1 4. And you could either say 1 divided by a fourth is 4, because a fourth goes into 1 4 times. Or you could say dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by a reciprocal. So 1 times 4 over 1 is the same as 1 times 4, and that's 4 ohms. <laughs> My ohms look like R's, but they're really ohms. These. Mm -hmm. So those are on the CTBA number 4, which is on April 20th. So come to school ready to take the CTBA. Oh, I've already got the CTBA. So today, we're doing more index of refraction stuff. Uh, we're not using this formula again. <coughs> oh, I said come to school ready to take the CTBA. You don't have to come to school for the CTBA if you're virtual. Sorry if I freaked you out. But you can do it. Just like the other CTBA. Anyway. Um, it'll be useful to keep this formula in mind, uh, but we're not doing math with this one. We're going to do math with this one, just like four times, maybe three and a half times. Uh, <clears throat> so, remember that the index of refraction says how much that material slows down light. So, if the speed of light in a vacuum is three times 10 to the 8, and the speed of light in that material is 1.5 times 10 to the 8, divided by 1.5 is 2. So the index of refraction is 2 because light is twice as slow in that other material as it is in uh, a vacuum. Um, so is it, it'll be important when you're doing some of these questions. There, a bunch of them are conceptual questions that ask you to rank the index of refractions from greatest to least. And you have to know, or I think it says least to greatest. You have to know that the bigger that number is for n, the slower light goes in that material. If n is 3, that means light is 3 times as slow. If n is 5, that means light is 5 times as slow as in a vacuum. So like on this one, thank, let me make sure they can see. I'm going to draw something over here. All right, I think we have a dog in the classroom. Anyway. Um, the way that helps me figure out these, because one thing it's going to ask you is, is this light speeding up from N1 to N2, or is it slowing down? What helps me is I pretend like that's, that's kind of a straight line, I guess. I pretend like I'm zooming in to where that ray is, and I can see the ray. That's, that's way too zoomed in. We're going to zoom out just a little bit. OK. So there's my ray of light. And if it's going to turn this way, then I have to figure out what's happening. So I like to draw it like this so that I can, or imagine it like this, so that I can see this corner getting here first. If this corner gets here first, if this slows it down, then it's going to, that top corner is still going to keep going, and it's going to turn this way. That's the opposite way from what this one turns, so this one is probably speeding up. 
So if this corner gets here and then speeds up, this one will go just the same speed, but this one will go faster. So it'll go, and that must be it. So this one must be speeding up. So we know the index of refraction here. Uh, let's see, if this one is faster than this one, this index of refraction is greater than this index of refraction. Because this one slows down light more, this one doesn't slow down light as much. And there will be some questions on here that ask you to like rank these. It'll say, okay, it does that, and then it does that. And you've got to say, okay, I've got to rank these from least to greatest. So I know this one goes fast. This is probably the least one. This one looks like it slows it down a lot compared to that one. So I think that one is the least, and then this one's in the middle, and then this one slows it down more. Does that make sense? All right, get it. Use your brain with this. I'm kind of in the way right now. Um, I'm going to erase this because it might get confusing. <coughs> so, we're using Snell's Law here. Now, as a bonus for this assignment, I included a picture of the scientist Snell at the very end of the assignment. But don't look until you get to the end. The, the real person that did Snell, Snell's Law, was called Snellius. It's a very old name. People like Ptolemy and Snellius and Descartes and a whole bunch of other people figured out this stuff by themselves, so it's not just one person. So I don't feel bad about putting a, a good picture at the end. Anyway, so Snell's Law means that N1 times this times the sine of this angle, you know, this index of refraction times the sine of the angle, uh, in that material is equal to this index of refraction times the sine of this angle. So we're going to work this out. This one looks like it's about 45 degrees. And let's pretend like N1 up here is 1.409. I picked that number specifically. So hold on. And in 2 down here, let's say that that's 1. one. And that, that works out because this one is bigger than this one. It'll speed up when it gets there. I think probably this, these angles mean that this one is bigger than 1.4, but uh, whatever. Pretend that it works. So let's try it out. N1 times the sine of theta 1. It's 1.409 times the sine of 45 degrees equals N2, we're saying is 1 for air times the sine of theta 2. And we're going to figure out that second angle with math. Now the first question, um, you can just divide by, like you can just do regular algebra with, you don't have to mess with fancy trigonometric stuff, although your calculator will need to be in degrees if you're going to do the sine of 45 degrees. Anyway, let's see what my math says here. Mm -hmm. I got point nine nine six three. What is that? Is that still a radio station? Ninety six point three. Yes. KSCS. Country best country Texas best country. So it is. Yes. Okay, good. Uh. So that equals 1 times sine of theta 2. I'm just going to say sine of theta 2 because 1 times that is just that. And here's where we use our fancy trigonometric function because usually we do the sine of the angle equals the answer. Now we're doing the answer and trying to find out what the angle would be if you did take the sine of it to get this. So the way to do that is to use your inverse sine function. Um, I don't quite remember what other names for it might be, so try. I think it's A sine or arc sine is the same as inverse sine. If that doesn't work, then try something else. <laughs> because if you do this to get theta 2, for theta 2, you should get 85.1. Degrees. 
and that would be my other angle. All right, that's not 85 degrees, so I, I messed up somewhere with making stuff up. But uh, I did this for a reason because there is one question that you're going to get an error for on your calculator. I think it's the very last question. So it's kind of a trick question. You've got to use your brain to figure out what that real angle would be. And honestly, wouldn't really refract if you're dealing with angles from here to here. But um, <clears throat> if it did refract, tell me what the angle would be. See if you can figure out that trick question. The deal with that one is why it gives you an error is the sign graph. You remember the sign graph? It goes like this. Are you looking? This. Oh, can they see me? No. Sign graph goes like this. Now you can see me. It, go, it only goes up to one and then down to negative one. Those are, that's its range. So uh, what ends up happening with that one is you, have, you get a domain error from it not being a, in the range of sign. So, <coughs> but you can get real close and figure out what that angle would be. Uh, so please try this. No, it's a lot of assignment. Y'all got questions? <coughs>